Before this video begins, I'd like to give a special thanks to the people listed on screen for supporting me on Patreon. Welcome to Let's Play NASCAR 2005 Chase for the Cup Part 246. And in this segment, we're going to Texas for our next race, the Samsung Radio Shack 500. And I still need to do the autograph minigame despite reaching the fan cap, so hey, I guess I have to stay on the cap, so, you know. Oh well. I'm sure no matter what happens in this race, I'll make up these 1,500 fans that I just lost, so, you know, it's whatever. Anyways, Billy Webb, do your intro. Make it good. Around here, they like to say everything is bigger in Texas. Like, for instance, the pressure to win. The Texas Motor Speedway is a young mile and a half track with an old and bold attitude. Get out of line here and somebody's going to kick your dash. All race fans know you will get your money's worth in Fort Worth as EA Sports presents the Samsung Radio Shack 500. Yeah. All right, so starting on pole yet again. I don't know how many poles that is for me, but that's, that's quite a few, I'm sure. Starting alongside Brendan Gone because again, he's for some reason good in this game. EA had high hopes for him. Ooh. Ooh, excuse me, Scott Wimmer starting in last. So here we go, 83 laps around Texas, under 25 miles, let's, let's, let's fucking do it. Now is this going to be like Atlanta where I kind of just chill in front with a couple second gap? Probably not because this track has the shitty turn three. God, I've forgotten how to drive not short tracks. All right, well, early signs are pointing to um, a somewhat dominant race. So I am pulling away quick from Jarrett. Looks like Newman's fighting for second. I'm not surprised at all that Newman's so good in this game, considering A, he was the, you know, the prologue man, and also B, the fact that his 2003 season was really good when he wasn't crashing. You know, getting a shit ton of pulls and wins, but also just dying. Oh, Newman was a great qualifier. He had so many poles, like, during uh, this time frame. Like, from... The, this this little era, I remember a couple things. Newman was really good at qualifying and would usually contend for the win if he didn't crash. And Matt Kenseth would usually start way in the back because he sucked at qualifying, but he'd always end up almost winning. I, I don't know about that IndyCar thing. The only thing Indy cars at Texas would remind me of would be Vegas and that crash, since they're basically the same circuit. You know, high banked one and a half mile, don't even have to fucking try in an Indy car. Vroom quick, fast, ramp, hit fence, die. But that's just me.
Knew it was on pole more than a stripper trying to make rent. <laughs> this is true. This is very true. Meanwhile, I have an almost three second lead over... Looks like Newman's got around DJ for second. So once again, Master and Apprentice running in the top two. Except the Apprentice is fucking just left. Checked out. From everyone. Oh yeah, I saw that Mercedes with the BBS wheels. That was that was pretty swagging. I unironically liked it. Whoops, that's a wall. Ah, oh, it was just a show car. Oh, damn, or er, wheels. We My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. The fuck is that guy's name like review of the week or something? I need to watch his content. Cause I do kinda like that sophisticated, subtle, dry humor, or whatever the fuck. You, bruh. Hmm. Ah, uh, did some of my past videos recently. I'm so sorry. No one should be subjected to that kind of torture. Oh my god. The understeer out of two. Then again, I did add a half round of wedge after qualifying. I'm not sure if it carried over here, but... Because the car was a little bit loose in qualifying, so... I, I did do that. Oh yeah, my Maple Valley and Grand Valley videos. I was proud of those videos. Kind of. I was mostly happy because the Grand Valley video actually, like, pretty much got promoted by YouTube. And it skyrocketed in views. Like, it got, like, 100,000 views in a week, and now it struggles to get 20 views a week, or a day, or whatever. Yes, hello, Chicane. Jacani. Unfortunately, it didn't. Uh, YouTube didn't promote it long enough for it to surpass uh, GT4 Part One in my most as my most viewed video of all time. We. Oh, it's wide open as Kentucky or Michigan. I don't know. Kentucky's. I mean, Kentucky is pretty much the same as this. High banked, one and a half miles, you know. Except it has a sweeping front straight instead of double dog leg. The double dog. Or double kink. Or double double. Dee -bo -dee -bo -dee 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 -dee. Oh, yeah, exactly, Chicane. Like, it, it, they pretty much just randomly, on a whim, decided, like, hey, we'll recommend this video to people. Okay. Hasn't happened since. 
Like, literally none of my other history of videos have even come close to the number of views Grand Valley got. Like, Maple Valley, I think, got like 30 grand. And I think everything else has like less than 10 grand. I'm mostly disappointed in the Atlanta video. I'm like, I was hoping, like, alright, this this took a lot of effort to get all these goddamn ra games to run and record. Hopefully this, you know, actually gets noticed by people. 400 views. Well, shit. Don't do current event videos. Nah, man, that's actually like how you get popular. Is you gotta you gotta stay topical, topical and drama. God, I can't drive. I have some ninety second reviews. Uh. I realize I'm really bad at reviewing things, so I just gave up on that. Like, here's the gist of me reviewing something. I like it. It's cool. The end. My lemon. We. Oui. Simple. I mean, I don't know. I've been like, I've, I want to like do something. Fucking shit, professional. That was just hi. I'm bored and feel like shit posting. I haven't done a shit post video in a long time. I kind of want to make another. Just don't know what. Um, but yeah, but like, I, I would like to make some kind of content that would expose people to more things that I care about. I, d I just want someone to talk fucking... T talk, talk like J-Metal with, okay? Look. I want people to know <laughs> that Bandmade is amazing. I just don't know how to do it. Nor would anybody care. Even semi contemplating making like some kind of reaction channel. Where it's not necessarily reacting to like things I've never seen, but more I guess live I guess more of like a live review. <laughs> That makes sense. I don't fucking know. I'm stupid. Almost a quarter track lead. Not even close. Not even close. This is like a tenth of a track lead right now. Hey, Quay. Well, I'm turning quite left. I'm not doing it very well, though. Mostly since my tires are wearing out. Getting closer to the first round of pit stops. Also, my lead's falling from four seconds to two and a half, so... Yay. I still hate this turn three entry. And I will continue bitching about it until this game is over. Is that still Jarrett behind Newman? Couldn't tell.
cars are dirt to Daytona too. Yeah, it's called a uh, NASCAR Heat Three. Torrent. It's a good game. I think I'm going to pit next lap. Hopefully Newman won't be like trying to pass me next lap. That way I can actually dive down into pit lane. Oh, okay, Newman's pitting now. All right. I guess there eliminates that possibility. Oh, that's Harvick that was behind Newman. I was wondering why I was seeing red. Like a couple pixels of red on the car behind him. That is Harvick. Don't ask how I can tell with that few pixels on screen, but I, I could tell. Hey, it did give me the wedge adjustment that I made in qualifying. Alright, cool. Oh, God. Okay, pit stop number one. Wedge's arrow. I don't know what Wedge does. I just know it increases and decreases, uh, Understeer and oversteer, depending on where you go with it. Hi, Newman. Well, Newman got the undercut from hell. Ooh. And low DJ. I think Wedge adjusts like rear end balance or something, I'm not sure. I honestly don't know. Oh yeah, the New Hampshire road course. Hell yeah. Extreme G Racing, I don't even know what that game is. I don't think I've ever heard of that game. Okay, I've probably heard of the game, but I don't know anything about it. Other than it's extreme and for G's. Man's F zero. Cool. And Dale won the title ninety eight. Uh, ninety nine, I think. Yeah, it was ninety nine because Gordon won in ninety eight. Well, the 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 mid to late nineties was an interesting time for uh, Cup champions because we had. Let's see, ninety five was Jeff Gordon, then Terry Labonte in ninety six. Somehow. Then Gordon went back to back in 7 and 8, and then Jarrett won in 99, Bobby Labonte won in 2000, and then wasn't it Tony Stewart the one in 01? Or was it Gordon? No, I think it was Gordon in 01, maybe Stewart in 02? I don't even fucking know. Anyways, I got the lead back from Newman. Apprentice has yet again passed the master. And then flexes by driving like absolute garbage trash in three and four. Nose itch. Yeah, and then, at, then in 2004, <laughs> everything went to shit.
think we're about five laps from halfway now. If my mate is correct. I mean, the original chase structure was a lot better than what we currently have with the playoffs. That's for goddamn sure. Later, Newman. See you next pit cycle. Speaking is hard. Um, we begin the calm middle of the race where not much happens. It's kind of riding around until we reach the next pit cycle. Exciting gameplay! Oh god, pick up. looking away, almost whacked the wall. Yeah, unless we unless we get a caution. Which is definitely possible. Maybe not so much probable, but definitely possible. <laughs> My contact fell out. Throw it, put it out, put it out. Brain turn one. But I don't see anything, boss. I don't either, but I know it's there. Penis. Yeah, I did like the requirements for actually being in the chase in the beginning because, you know, you actually had to be, like, in the top ten in points in order to have a chance at the title instead of just like, oh, we want, you won a race and, well, you may have, been, may have been a backmarker for the other, you know, 23 races, but hey, you're in the playoffs. It, it takes me back to that one chart I saw a, a long time ago, where it's like, um, person wins all of the first 35 races and then finishes second at Homestead. There is a chance he won't, like, that is potential that he's not the champion. 
he has the potential to lose the title because he finished second at Homestead. And then there's the guy who won one race in the, f the regular season, finished 30th in all the other races, then won one race in the first round, finished dead last in the other, or in each round of the playoffs, finished dead last in the other races, and then won at Homestead, guaranteed champion. I'm like, hmm. It's like this system is very flawed and doesn't work in this sort of application. Well, that makes more sense, though, John, because, like, you're actually winning, you know, the top team of your conference. It, like, that kind of automatic berth makes sense, I suppose. This isn't, you know, this, this isn't like normal sports, like, I guess foot sports, if you want to call it. Like, the thing with, like, another thing that makes the playoffs not work is, you know, in other sports, um, once we reach the playoffs, the teams that aren't in the playoffs don't play. The thing with NASCAR is, you still have all the teams and drivers on the track that aren't in the playoffs. So, your playoff contents, con your championship hopes could be ruined by some fucking random who has nothing to do with the championship taking you out. And that's another huge flaw I don't like about it. About it. Eh, I don't really care for the winning. I don't. I don't like the winning year end system. Because it's it's stuff like you know Daytona and Talladega. Literally anybody could win because you don't need any actual like skill to win at Daytona and Talladega. Just need luck and someone who can and someone who. Or you, all you need to do is be lucky enough to avoid the giant crash and then you know somehow win. Like, championships and racing should award consistency. That's why I was, I was so, so hoping Newman would win the title, like, a couple years ago. Because I don't think he won a single race and he was in the final four. Uh, no, John. They have to prove... They have to prove throughout the rest of the season that they're worthy of contending for a title, not just, oh hey, they got one win in that one race. It'd be like Boris said showing up for one, like, just a one-off race wins it. Oh, he can, he can go for the championship now. But he's not even a full-time driver. Yeah, but he won a race. But he's not even a full, yeah, but he won a race. Yeah, Trevor Bain. Like, don't get me wrong, I loved that moment when Trevor Bain won the 500 uh, for the Wood Brothers. Mostly for the Wood Brothers, more than Trevor Bain. Because I like the Wood Brothers. A lot. They're like the ultimate underdog team. Um, but yeah. That was, that was Trevor's only moment. He fell into mediocrity immediately afterwards and never, uh, f like, rose from it. Yeah, Celine, top 30 in points. That's how Kyle Busch, you know, won the title a couple years ago. What was it, 2016? Despite missing the first third of the season, it's like, well, if you're in the top, make it to the top 30, you're in. Like, oh. I mean, not to discredit, like, what he did after he returned from injury to, you know, put him, you know, 
actually win him the championship. He still should not have been a contender for the championship because he missed all those races due to an injury. That'd be almost like putting the 2017 Cleveland Browns in the Super Bowl. By comparison. Or some shit. Like, oh, here's way they're way down in the standings, but you know what? They they had a good game. They didn't win. Okay, maybe the Cleveland Browns wasn't the best uh uh, comparison to make, considering they went winless last year, but still. Just want to go back to how it was for one season. I just want them to completely nuke the playoff system, make it, you know, like, hey, you want to win the cup title? Be consistent over all 36 races. You're the champion. 2017 Browns versus 08 Lions. Oh, God. The ultimate Super Bowl. Also, I need a pit here. I feel like if the Patriots just decided to not play like the first half of the season, but they were still automatically put in the Super Bowl, just because they're the New England fucking Patriots, and fuck the Patriots, but still. Or as I call him, Megatron. <laughs> oh, fucking knows. Hey, look, it's uh, Johnny Sauter. Exiting the pits. I wonder how he's doing in this race. I know he didn't qualify well. Oh. Well, there goes a couple seconds. Tire fell off the, the hub. Which one, Harry? There's like three of them. Watch your rear view, buddy. That fucking made me just wince. It's like, oh, that, oh, that was painful. Yeet. Yeah, I like how they actually put uh, made Johnny Sauter one of the retirement, like retire, the retirement replacements. Their silly season replacements in this game. Yeah, top tier pit crew still fucks up. I know, right? It's like uh, Kevin Harvick's pit crew. Wait, what year was like Harvick's pit crew especially shit? Wasn't it 17? Speaking of sports, I haven't watched a John Boys video in a very long time. I should probably fix that. Because despite me not caring much about non-automotive sports anymore, his videos are still a lot of fun to watch. Alright, so... Looks like I have quite a gap to make up on Newman here. Oh yeah, five seconds, okay. Or it was 16. It was probably both years. To be honest. I don't even remember what the first actual race I watched was. I was too young to remember. And a little Mr. Jarrett. I'll tell you what Brown can do for me, Dale. Get out of me fucking way. First F1 race. I watch was my last, I think. Rip. I, I, I started. I grew up watching NASCAR, watching NASCAR initially. Then I discovered Speed Vision and Le Mans, and I was like... This is amazing. 
it's not uh, pretty much just like all forms of motorsports except for drag racing. Just can't get into drag racing. And drifting. Like it's fun to do with video games. When I absolutely have to, but eh. I don't actually care about competitive drifting. I only care about recreational drifting. This. No, that's not who I thought it was. It's Jefferson Gordondo. All right. For a second there, I thought this was like Johnny Sauter for some reason. I'm like, damn, he's all the way up in fourth. Sports car racing, yeah. I don't know. I think it's because, like, I like endurance racing and shit. Well, I, I just like watching races for a while. Like, long... Uh, eh. I'm trying to word this in a way that would explain why I don't really care for drag racing, but I can't. I, I just don't... I like watching races that last longer than five seconds. Okay? That's... But that's just me. Like... I'm not knocking drag racing, like, it's definitely really cool, it's just not something that interests me from an entertainment standpoint. Excuse me. It was a bit of a cheeky dive for me, but fuck it. Racing a lot, mainly NASCAR, yeah. I, I've fallen off the NASCAR bandwagon in the past few years just because I don't like all the gimmicks. It's an interesting little battle for the lead here. Okay, maybe not. That's a back marker. Or was that Newman passing a back? I can't fucking tell. Yeah, Daytona's coming up. I'm fucking excited. Yeah, like, drag racing is, like... Like, really impressive from a technical and a reaction standpoint, but in terms of, like actual entertainment, I'm just like, you know, whatever. It's kind of like baseball to me, it's like, you get those couple seconds of excitingness, and then you, that's followed by like two minutes of setup and just blech. Are all the Hendrick cars running alternate liveries in this race? I think they are. Because Gord Gordondo has the silver. Flame. Johnson has the Murica. I think Craven was also or Craven. Uh, Sauter was also running a uh, alternate livery. Actually, I don't think Vickers was running an alternate livery. Three-hour LMP3 race tomorrow. Hmm. Interesting. Lee Diffie for the announcing crew. Hell yeah. Hasn't Lee Diffie called a couple NASCAR races in recent years? It's so silly to me, just because of his accent in NASCAR. Like, what is this? That doesn't sound like a sister fucker. What are we doing talking about my NASCAR? I'm gonna go get my gun. Oh shit, that's a wall. I saw that announcement, Harry, when I was, you know, watching Wrestle Kingdom. <laughs> That's great, Celine. Alright, it's 
need to hold on to this lead for another six laps. The free shall be mine. Unfortunately, I'm doing a bad job of driving right now, so uh, holding on to this lead might not be as easy as I would like it. Plus, you know, I spent all my time with Pete Grip just trying to close this gap on Newman and Johnson. I don't even remember the first time I heard Diffie. Oh, hey, Diffie. God. Could you... Here we go. Dream NASCAR announced team. Lee Diffie and Calvin Fish. <laughs> That'd be perfect. Maybe put Derek Daly in there. Or a Greg Kramer or something. Whatever the fuck that guy's name is, I can't even remember. Just the most unlikely of announced teams. Oh god, I just got an amazing idea. What if... Uh... What, what if they fucking had, like, uh... They did the, they did a reverse thing like they did in 2010 or 11 during a Bathurst 1000 where uh, you know instead of flying Mike Joy and Daryl Waltrip to Australia they fly the V8 supercars announcers to uh, the US for a NASCAR race dude I'd be down for Scafey talking about NASCAR didn't fly Marcus Ambrose. He's driven a NASCAR. It'd be perfect. Ambrose and Scafey calling a NASCAR race. Could you imagine that? With Larco in the pits with his freaking whiteboard. I don't know why I'm thinking about the daydream about these things. Final lap. One to go. Got a couple back markers between myself and Newman and Johnson. Ah, Mike and Daryl covering Daytona. Daryl would fucking fall asleep after like three hours. Probably. I think for the bits black. And out of turn four, we're gonna win again here at Texas. For my fifth victory of the season. Oh, Larry Mack. I can only imagine Larry Mack calling an endurance race. And there's Jordan Taylor in the tin car. Being also being co pilot fuck it. I was gonna make a Larry Mack joke, but then it just, I, I, my brain just faded. Hey, Reflector. <laughs> Anyways, here's the results. And Robbie Gordon finished 34th. Alright, I didn't see, uh, oh, hey, Ward Burton blew up. I didn't even realize there was a retirement. Um,. Didn't see where uh, Solder finished, but oh well. Yeah. All right, so back in the menu, I'm just gonna cut out victory lane because I don't really know what else to say about it. Let's just look at the standings now. After that race, leads up to 161 over Gordon, who's taking second place. Kenseth's fallen all the way from second to fifth, and after that race, and it was actually pretty tight up here in the top ten. Cool. But yeah, hold on to 161 point lead. How many poles do I... Oh. <laughs> I have qualified on pole in every race. Okay, I see. And I have my five wins. Hooray. So let's check out our new trophy, which is pretty interesting, because... It's a big-ass boot. Yeehaw. Pardoner. Radham Cowboy. 
Uh, there's something in my eye. There's another cool trophy, I guess. If you like, I don't know. Anyways, that's done. Hey, 66% of our trophies. That's cool. Still a long way away from level 10 prestige. That's like the only cap we need to reach, but yeah, so. That'll do it for this segment. So next time, we'll move on to wherever the hell we're going next. I don't even know, but stay tuned for more NASCAR.